Today I'm going to discuss how to use qualitative graphs to describe situations. In math, often we are interested in investigating how two different variables are related to each other. Usually the value of one variable depends on the value of the other. For example, suppose we wanted to investigate the relationship between a person's height and the person's age. Now in this example, a person's height depends on their age. So the person's height would be called the dependent variable. The other variable, the person's age, is called the independent variable. A graph can be used to visually show how the two variables are related. The independent variable is always represented by the horizontal axis. The dependent variable goes on the vertical axis. In this section, we'll be making qualitative graphs, which just means that there's no scaling on either of the two axes, meaning we're not going to put any tick marks or any numbers labeled along these axes. Now let's think about how these two variables are related. As a person's age gets bigger and bigger, what happens to their height? Well, as a person gets older, they grow taller, but only to a certain point. We also want to think about what is a person's height when their age is zero, meaning they were just born. Their height isn't zero at that point, because even a baby has a certain height. So there's some initial height value when the age is zero. I'm going to represent that with a green dot on this graph, meaning when the age is zero, the height is some value that would depend on how big the baby was when they were born. And as the age goes up, we can expect that the height will increase. But as someone nears adulthood, it's going to level off because a person reaches their maximum height. Now this is called an increasing curve because it goes upward from left to right. It's also important to realize that this point right here is a special point and it's called an intercept. This particular intercept would be called the H-intercept because that's where the curve crosses the h-axis. In this case, there is no a-intercept because the curve never crosses or touches the a-axis. Let's look at a new example. The percentage of smokers in the U.S. has declined steadily since 2000. Let P be the percentage of smokers in the U.S. at T years since 2000. Now in this case, the two variables are P and T. And P would be the dependent variable because the percentage of smokers depends on how many years after 2000 it is. So just like before, We'll label the independent variable on the horizontal axis and the dependent variable on the vertical axis. Now when t equals zero, that means it's the year 2000 and there's some percentage of smokers during that year. We're not sure what that value is, but we'll put that in right here on the p-axis. And the problem says that percentage of smokers has declined steadily since then. Now the key word there is steadily. If something decreases or declines steadily, that means it's going to do so in the shape of a straight line, meaning it goes down about the same amount year after year.
Now this is an example of a decreasing curve because it goes downward from left to right. Also, we can say that there is a linear relationship between the two variables because the graph is a straight line. Now, what about intercepts? Does this curve have any intercepts? Well, we know it has a p-intercept because there's a point where the curve crosses the p-axis. What about a t-intercept? Do you think this line would ever cross the t-axis? If you think about that, that would mean at that particular point in time, the percentage of smokers would be 0%. I know that hasn't happened yet, so we'll assume that there's no t-intercept. Let's try one more example. A stone is thrown upward from the top of a 50-foot high building. H represents its height above ground after t seconds. Now in this problem, H would be the dependent variable because the height of the stone depends on how many seconds have passed. T or time would be the independent variable. So, we'll label T on the horizontal axis and H on the vertical axis. Now let's think about what the height of the stone would be when time equals zero, meaning just before the stone is thrown. Since the problem says the stone is thrown from the top of a 50 foot high building, that means when t is zero, the stone would be 50 feet above ground, meaning at the top of the building. So we'll put a dot right here on the h-axis and that would really be at 50 feet. Now we're doing qualitative graphs in this section, so we don't really need to scale that axis, but in this case we do know that that point would be placed at 50 feet above ground. Now, once the ball is thrown, since it's thrown upward, we would expect the stone to, to rise. It's going to reach a peak, and then come back down and hit the ground at this point. As you can see, this curve increases and then decreases. Also, this curve has two intercepts. This point where the curve intersects the h-axis is called the h-intercept. And the other intercept down here would be called the t-intercept because that's where the curve intersects the t-axis. Now one thing that would be helpful to realize is that at this h-intercept, the time is zero, meaning this is the height where the time is zero. And down here at this t-intercept, the height is zero, meaning that represents the time when the height is zero. This will help us be able to algebraically find these intercepts a little bit later on in this chapter. Well, that concludes this presentation, and I hope it's helped you to be able to identify independent and dependent variables, to be able to make qualitative graphs of authentic situations, to understand the difference between increasing and decreasing, and to also be able to understand the idea of an intercept of a curve.